may not know and many in the Senate chamber may not know that this week we actually passed a milestone on immigration in the United States. This week, less than three years into President Biden's term, we've now had more people illegally cross the border in the less than three years under the Biden administration than we had under the eight years of the Obama administration and the four years of the Trump administration. If you count both terms of the Obama administration and the Trump administration, that was six million people that illegally crossed the border. Under this president in less than three years, not 12, in less than three, we now have had more than six million people illegally cross the border. We had a hearing this week, DHS folks, to be able to talk about what in the world's going on. We met not with the policymakers because the policymakers won't meet with us. We met with the folks that are on the line to say, what is the process? How are things actually working? What steps are actually taken? And then what happens from here? Also, I had the opportunity to be able to look at some of the budget issues and other things that are coming up, which I'll explain later. But I wanted to be able to walk through where we really are right now and what's really happening on the border. Because since the expiration of Title 42, in the days that followed that in May, the administration announced, look, the numbers are dramatically down. And for a month, the numbers were down some. But then they popped right back up, so much so that the Washington Post last week had a headline that read, highest number of illegal family crossings in the history of the country was in August of this year. Now, most folks just turned away, and they heard the administration say, look, the numbers went down, and so they looked away from what's happening at the border, but our numbers are at the highest ever, and the complication of how they're actually being treated is the highest ever. So let me walk through some of the things that came up in the hearing that I want to be able to walk through on this, because when you cross the border illegally at this point, there's lots of options there, and the options are designed by the Department of Homeland Security and by the White House not to deter people from crossing the border, but to facilitate a more rapid crossing. So there's multiple processes that have been set up that are entirely new. Let me give you one. If you come to a, a, the port of entry, you can now, before you get to a port of entry on the southern border, actually check in ahead of time to make your process of checking in faster. It's an app that you can get on your phone called the CBP-1 app. If you download that app, you fill out the form where you're from, then when you get to the border, you'll be expedited through the process at the port of entry and released into the country. If you're one of those folks that have filled out the app and have gone through, you'll be quickly screened. According to the testimony that we heard yesterday, 90% of those folks are released almost immediately into the country and within 30 days, they have a work permit. Now, these are not folks that have applied for a visa. These are not folks that have gone through the H-1B or H-2B or any of those processes. Th these are not folks that have actually gone through the formal process of getting a work permit. These are folks that have come from all over the world, have filled out an app right before they came across the border, and then they were facilitated right into the country. And if you think these are folks that are coming in from Guatemala and Honduras and Mexico, more than 150 countries have crossed the border this year. And I'll walk through some of those numbers in just a moment. One option that you have to be quickly expedited into the country without seeking prior approval is just to fill out the app ahead of time. Then your paperwork is done and you're across the border even faster when you get here. Second option is you actually don't fill out the form. You just show up at the port of entry and say, I didn't fill it out ahead of time. The response at that point is, it'll take you a little bit longer to process several hours more time to be able to go through and fill the things out, you'll still be released. You'll still be given what's called parole into the country. You'll still get a work permit within 30 days to be in the country. Not because you applied for a work permit early or went through the legal process, not because you're any of the tens of thousands of people all over the world that want to work in the United States, so they legally approach the issue. These are folks that just cross at a port of entry, either filling out ahead of time or just filling it out when you get there, quickly expedited, unlimited numbers. Third group. Third group are the folks that actually come between the ports of entry. These are the folks that didn't cross. These are the folks that came through the open desert or swam across the river in the Rio Grande. These are the folks that crossed 
got into the country. Some of them bolted and ran from Border Patrol. Some of them turned themselves in. It just kind of depends on where they are. These individuals, not between the ports of entry, haven't done anything ahead of time. Now, they're treated much, more, much different. These individuals are actually picked up between the ports of entry, taken to a Border Patrol station where they process their paperwork, they fill out all the information, and then they release them into the country. But the consequence is, because they didn't come at a port of entry, it's gonna take them two months to get a work permit. Two months, not one month. So, let me review. If you come at a port of entry, no matter who you are, no matter where you're from, they'll check and see if you're on a terror watch list, and if you're not on the terror watch list, then they're just gonna allow you in. They'll set up a court hearing, whether you cross between the ports of entry or whether you cross at the port of entry, they'll set up a court hearing for you to be able to plead for asylum or to be able to ask for your parole extension or whatever that may be, or what they call a change of status. Well, let's just do some of those court hearing dates here to be able to walk through where we are. If you come between the port of entry and you ask for asylum as soon as you cross the border and you're caught somewhere in the desert, and you say, I, I, I want to plead asylum, I have fear in my country, they'll line up a hearing after they, you're released into the country, and let's say you want to go to New York City. You can go to anywhere you want to. If you say, I want to go to New York City, and that's where I want to land, over 100,000 people recently have asked to go to New York City. So they transfer, they go to New York City. Right now, they'll set up the next hearing date for you. And let me look at the list here. The next hearing date for you to get a hearing on your asylum claim and your notice to appear is in October of 2032. October 2032. That's the next open hearing date that they have available. So let me run this past us. Right now on our southern border, as of this exact instant, some people are checking in, they're getting parole. Within 30 days, they're released to be able to get into the country with a work permit. They're traveling anywhere they want to in the country. We have no background for these, uh, for these individuals. And they're told to check in at a hearing nine years from now. Anybody want to guess how many folks are going to show up at that hearing nine years from now? I mentioned before, many of these individuals are not from Central America. In fact, just this year, just this year, we've had 15,000 people that have illegally crossed the border, many in the open desert area from China. When I talk to the folks from the Oklahoma Bureau of Narcotics at home, they tell me most of the criminal organizations that are growing illegal marijuana and facilitating drug trafficking in my state are Chinese nationals that have illegally crossed the border that are partnering with Mexican cartels in Chinese criminal organizations to be able to do business and drug trafficking in my state. Those folks cross between ports of entry, were checked in at a border patrol station and waved into my country, and they're now running criminal operations in my state. 15,000 Chinese nationals just this year. We're right at 10,000 citizens of Mauritania that have illegally crossed our border this year that we know of. Bonus points to anyone in this room that can point out Mauritania without looking it up on a map right now. 10,000 that have come in. By the way, Mauritania is a fast growing area in West Africa where Al Qaeda is quickly accelerating in that area. We have 10,000 individuals that are from Mauritania that have come into our country just this year across the southern border. We have exactly no criminal information exchange with Mauritania. We have no idea, these individuals, if they committed crimes in their home country, why they left, we have no information about them. And in an area that is literally a hotbed for Al Qaeda, we have facilitated through this process set up by the White House, 10,000 individuals into our country. Media reported this week 
that an ISIS affiliate has been working with cartels in Mexico to facilitate citizens of Uzbekistan into our country across the border from Mexico into our country. Those individuals have crossed into our country and under this process were released and we currently don't know where they are. Now, can someone explain to me why an ISIS affiliate is working with Uzbek citizens to be able to traffic them across our southern border into the United States? And under the current policies of this administration, they are being released into the country unsupervised. Yesterday in the hearing, I asked several simple questions because I've heard over and over again, individuals that are being released into the country, some of them are giving what's called alternative to detention. That is a, a phone that, it's not really a phone, it's a device, it's a GPS device that is able to track their whereabouts. That sounds great to say we've got some kind of tracking device on these individuals that are released in the country, except when I do a follow-up question and to say, how long are they awaiting their hearing? And the answer is somewhere between five and 10 years awaiting the hearing. How long do they have the tracking device? And the answer is 130 days. They're tracked for the first 130 days. And then they turn that in. And after that, we have no idea where they are. We have no idea what they're doing. But we gave them a work permit and we released them into the country and they're anywhere they want to go at this point. Interestingly enough, if you're an individual right now anywhere in the world and you want to work in the greatest country in the world, that is the United States, and you've got a family member here or whatever it may be, and they can line up a job for you here, and you're going to apply for one of our work visas. If you want to go through the process to apply for one of our work visas, it will take you months to years to get it. Or you could just cross the border in the desert, across the river, at a port of entry, or maybe even fill out a form ahead of time, and you'll have unlimited work permits immediately. Within 30 to 60 days, you'll be given that. And you can land anywhere you want to in the United States, unchecked, unfettered, no background check, no criminal history for any individual. Listen, I'm a huge proponent of legal immigration. Our nation was built on legal immigration. It's one of the moments that I love to do as a United States Senator, and that's go to naturalization ceremonies and be a part of watching individuals literally raise their right hand, denounce the country they were born in, and become citizens of the United States. It is an absolutely beautiful experience to be able to watch literally new Americans be born right in front of you. As I traveled around my state in August, not a single person said to me, not one, that they're opposed to legal immigration. But I had person after a person of all political perspectives, right, left, center, that said to me, this makes them nervous. Six million people in less than three years that we know almost nothing about them are currently in our country going anywhere they want to, doing whatever they want to, because this administration is not focused on deterring people from coming into the country illegally. They're focused on speeding up the process of people coming into the country illegally. This needs to stop. This body has to have a serious conversation about defining asylum because this administration is abusing the term asylum. They're making it mean something no one's ever made it mean. We need to clarify what the word asylum means so this administration can abuse that asylum definition and no future administration can do that. We need to increase the number of legal visas that we have as a nation so that people that want to come work can come work in this great country can be a part of our economy, but we know who they are and we know that they've been vetted. It's very different than this process. May I remind you, people in this room know, but many of the folks that cross the border show up with no paperwork at all, at all. 
In fact, it's very common for Chinese citizens when they show up, they show up with a photocopy of a passport, not the actual passport. They show up with a photocopy of the passport and say, this is me. And we have no idea if that's actually their passport photo, their details, how that photocopy has been doctored. Other folks show up with no birth certificate, no passport, no idea of any type, and they just say a name and they say a country and they've been told by Department of Homeland Security, just write down the new name, write down the country they tell you, process them into the country, hand them this new ID, and they can travel anywhere in the country they want to go. We have lost our mind. That's not what it's supposed to be like to do immigration in the United States. So, what do we need to do about it? Fix the definition of asylum. I need colleagues on both sides of the aisle to actually talk to this administration and to say, why is the Democrat Party becoming the party of illegal activity? This needs to be fixed so that we're back to being a party about legal activity, not celebrating what's illegal. And the third thing, we've got to fix a budget request. In the next few weeks, we're going to be dealing with a continuing resolution that will extend the budget to make sure the government stays open. I don't like government shutdowns. In fact, I have a nonpartisan bill. Many members of this body are on right now that ends government shutdowns. Government shutdowns do not help us as a nation. So I want to see an end to government shutdowns, even that is a threat hanging out there. And there's a practical, nonpartisan way to do that, that Democrats, Republicans, and independents are all on that bill right now. I'll talk about that sometime next week. But there's been a request from the White House in the meantime to say extend this, also add this little piece giving us flexibility on border funding. And I want to just read this to you, the request that the White House has made for the border. <clears throat> they made this request. They want flexibility for operations and support in this and any other act so that they can use funds to have community-based residential facilities, which they don't define, to provide services and support to refugees, asylum seekers, or other migrants, <clears throat> including, clearly this budget piece is getting me choked up. <clears throat> they want to allow this money to go to refugees, asylum seekers, other migrants, including the provision of medical care, treatment, legal orientation, programming, access to counsel, educational services, repatriation planning, counseling, referrals for social services, and other quote-unquote related programs. What does this mean? What they're asking is to be able to take DHS funds currently used right now and for the first time ever to be able to give legal counsel to every person that crosses the border. They also want to give housing to every person that crosses the border, that is community-based residential facilities to be able to provide housing, to provide medical care for every person that crosses the border. Now, we already provide emergency medical care. We're a humanitarian nation, but this is open-ended to whatever it may be. Open-ended for housing, open-ended for medical care, open-ended for uh, educational care, and open-ended for legal counsel. This is a huge shift this administration is looking for. They're not only looking for a way to facilitate more people coming in, they're looking for flexibility to take DHS dollars, which were allocated to prevent people from illegally crossing the border, to actually use those instead to help those that have illegally crossed the border to have housing, long-term medical care, long-term educational issues, additional legal expenses, on and on and on. This is entirely new. This is not one just to slip in to a bill. This is a huge change. I'm not opposed to immigration. I'm opposed to illegal crossings. And I'm opposed to whatever it takes to move people fast across the border to get into the interior of the country. That's not what we're supposed to do. 
for our national security reasons, for the state of our economy. Let's do immigration right. Let's honor what we've been as a nation and continue to welcome people from all over the world, but to actually do it the legal way. With that, I yield the floor.